Solve the equation cos 2 theta plus cos theta equals 0 for theta between 0 and 2 pi radians. Now notice that we have a double angle appearing in this equation. We also have a single angle, theta. Now the functions are both the same. They're both cos functions. That's good. Uh, we normally try to get all the functions the same or all the angles the same. So here we're going to try and get the angles the same. So we're going to use a double angle identity for cos 2 theta. So, to, so that we will have functions of 1 theta instead of 2 theta. Then all the angles will be 1 theta. So what do we do? Well, the identity we use for cos theta is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So that's what we replace cos 2 theta with. And just writing out the rest of this here, we now have an equation just involving 1 theta. And not only that, but the functions are the same. You know, I could have used a different identity for cos 2 theta. There's an identity involving sine squared theta. Wouldn't be such a good idea here, because then we'd have sine, we'd have a sine function and a cos function, two different functions. Try to keep the functions the same as well, if possible. Now, this is an ideal situation here, because um, this is an equation in cos of theta. Now, actually, it's a quadratic equation in cos of theta because we have cos of theta squared. So to make this easier to write and to, to, to read, I'm going to just let x stand for cos of theta. So now the equation becomes 2 times cos squared theta. Well, that's just cos theta times cos theta, or x times x, which is x squared. So we put x in here for cos theta. So we have a quadratic equation in x where x is equal to cos theta. If we get this into standard form, we put the x squared term first, then the x term, then the constant equals 0. And we can solve this quadratic. Um, I'll just factorize this. So 2x times x. It actually has factors. Uh, plus 1 here and minus 1 here. So you put each factor in turn equal to 0. And we get x equals a half, or x equals minus 1. But x is cos theta, so we get cos theta equals a half, or cos theta equals minus 1. Now, we need to solve these two equations for theta. Remember, theta has to be an angle between 0 and 360 degrees. Anyway, if you go to your calculator and get the inverse cos of a half, your calculator will give you the acute angle solution, which is 60 degrees. Now in radians, 60 degrees is pi over 3. R remember, pi radians is 180 degrees. So 180 divided by 3 is 60. Now, um, we use the cast rule to get other solutions. So we want the cos of theta to equal plus a half. So the sine of this number is important. So I'll just emphasize that. So we want this to be plus a half. So we want to see in which quadrant is the cos function positive. And it's obviously positive in the a quadrant. All the functions are positive there. Sine, cos, and tan are positive. Um, only the cos function is positive in this quadrant. So let's show the 60 degree angle. And the other angle is an angle between 270 and 360 degrees. And I've explained before how to get this angle. We just reflect this point through the x-axis and we get this point here. So the coordinates of these two points are very similar. The x-coordinate of this point is cos 60, which is a half. The x-coordinate of this point will actually be the cos of 300, which is also a half. Okay, so this angle here is 300 degrees. So the reference angle, if you want to call it, is 60 degrees. So we take 60 from 360 to get 300 degrees. So again, we're dealing with a unit circle. These distances are 1. So as an aside, I'll just write in the coordinates of this point here. Um, the coordinates are a half, comma, root 3 over 2, 
well we're not interested in the y value but the coordinates of this point here are a half comma minus root 3 over 2 so the x coordinate is the cos of the angle the cos of 60 degrees in this case and the x coordinate of this point is the cos of the angle in this case the angle is 300 degrees okay now that's the angle in degrees in radians it's actually 5 times 60 which is 5 times pi over 3 radians now let's get theta from this equation. We want the inverse cos of minus 1. If you go to your calculator, well, most calculators will give you 180 degrees, if not all calculators. Um, is this the only solution to this equation? Well, we go to the unit circle, play the cast rule. I won't draw the circle, but we're dealing with an angle of 180 degrees. So obviously we're not in, in a quadrant where the cos function is positive. So the cos function is negative. So we have to be in either the S or T quadrants. Actually, we're on the boundary of the S and T quadrants here. Um, on the unit circle, we're talking about a point with coordinates cos 180, sine 180. Coordinates are um, minus 1, 0. So the cos of 180 is the x value, which is minus 1. That's what we're interested in. And you can see that in the S and T quadrants, um, 180 degrees is the only angle which gives an x coordinate of minus 1. It's the only angle for which the cos is minus 1. You know, if we deal with angles that are less than 180 in the s quadrant, say an angle like this, well, you know, the x coordinate of this point is, is, is less than minus 1. Or, well, it's not equal to minus It's actually more than minus 1, but it's not minus 1. That's the important thing. And, uh, you know, if we go into angles in this t quadrant, we're dealing with um, points whose x value is not minus 1 either. So it's only this point. So there's only one solution to this equation. Well, only one solution between 0 and 360 degrees. Of course, I could add 180 degrees on, on well, 360 onto 180, and I'd be back to here. But we're not interested in that. We want our solutions to lie between 0 and 2 pi radians, or 360 degrees. We can, al we can always add 360 onto this. And we'll have a solution. We can always add 360 onto any angle and it won't change the value of the cos function. Um, that's outside the range so there's only one solution here which is 180 degrees. So we found three solutions to the original equation 60 degrees, 300 degrees or 180 degrees. And of course if you had time you could plug each of these and turn into this equation here and check that you get zero. Now here's another method for solving this equation. We see that this equation is the sum of two cos functions and we can look up an identity for cos A plus cos B. Now here it is. In previous videos we proved this um, that we can write the sum of cos functions as a product of cos functions. So here's our expression and compared to this, so we can see that a is 2 theta and b is theta. So we can write cos 2 theta plus cos theta as 2 times the cos of the sum of these angles divided by 2. So it's 2 theta plus 1 theta, that's 3 theta divided by 2 times the cos of the difference of the angles divided by 2. 2 theta minus theta is theta. So we get this. Now the fact that we have 0 on the right hand side makes life easy actually. Um, if we didn't have zero on the right hand side, if we had some other number like one or something, then we'd be in trouble. Then this method would be probably undoable. The fact that we have zero on the right hand side means that we can, and we, that we have a product equal to zero means that we can put each factor equal to zero. So we, we can uh, reduce this trigonometric equation to two simple trigonometric equations. So we can put this equal to zero and we can put this equal to zero and solve both of them. So let's look at this one here. Well we can divide across by two. Zero divided by two is zero. You know if two times something is zero then that something has to be zero. Uh, let's solve this equation. Now if you get the inverse cos of zero on your calculator you'll get 90 degrees. But that's not the only solution. 
So again, we have to go to the cast rule and uh, see where, see what angles have a cos of zero. Well, actually, if we look at the coordinates of the point on the unit circle for an angle of 90 degrees, uh, these coordinates are 0, 1. So the cos of 90 is 0. We're looking at the x value is the cos. And uh, where else is it 0? Well, it's 0 here, actually. The coordinates of this point are 0, minus 1. So what angle are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about this angle. Again, measure anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. This angle is 270 degrees. So this value here is the cos of 270 degrees. So they're the only two angles um, that give us a cos equal to zero. However, this is 3 theta over 2, and we're interested in theta. And remember that theta solutions have to lie between 0 and 360 degrees. To go from 3 theta over 2 to 9 to theta we get 2 thirds of 90 and uh, we'd have to get 2 thirds of 270 as well. Multiply by 2 divide by 3 to get theta. However there's another solution um, that's in between 0 and 360 degrees. We can add 360 onto either of these angles. We can add 360 onto 90. Do it down here. That gives us 450. So that's another solution. You can check that the cos of 450 is also zero. So adding adding 360 onto an angle doesn't change the sine, cos, or tan of that angle. We're just doing a full revolution. So if we have 90 here and we add 360, we're just back to here. So 90 plus 360 would look like this. That's an angle of 450 degrees. So we have to see if this leads us to another value of theta lying between 0 and 360. So remember, we're talking about 3 theta over 2 is equal to this. So theta then is 2 thirds of 450 degrees. Let's see if that's less than 360. If it is, we have, we have to include it in our solution. Well, it does actually. We get 300 degrees for theta. So sometimes you have to add 360 onto your angle, um, you know, for dealing with a triple angle. Well, it's 3 theta. Well, it's, well, you couldn't call this a triple angle. It's 3 theta over 2, but you might have some multiple of theta so that when you solve for theta, you want to make sure you get an angle in this range here. So there could be angles that are not immediately obvious. You might have to add 360 onto them, or maybe even more. And uh, say 720, that's 2 times 360. Well, you probably won't have to do that. You probably just have to add 360 on, onto one of them once. Adding 360 onto this will lead us to something that's too large, actually. Um, 360 plus 270 is 630. So if we were to put 3 theta over 2 equal to 630 and solve, you know, 2 thirds of 630 is 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 um is greater than 360. So we don't have to worry about um adding another revolution onto this angle here. So here's one solution. Now, the other solutions are got by getting 2 thirds of 90 degrees and 2 thirds of 270. See, we've this here uh, 3 theta over 2 equals 90, so I better get the other solution. So what's 2 thirds of 90 degrees? Well, 2 90s is 180. 180 divided by 3 is 60 degrees. What about 2 thirds of 270 degrees? Well, that's 180 degrees. 270 divided by 3 is 90, 90 times 2 is 180. So we found three solutions. So that corresponds to this equation here. But now we have to look at this one here. If you get the inverse cos of 0 on your calculator, you'll get 90 degrees. So theta over 2 can equal 90 degrees. So it's just like solving this equation here, actually. 
um, inverse we had to get inverse cos of naught here as well. So we had 90 degrees, or we had 270 degrees. You so it's the same story. Um, but then we have to add 360 onto these because what we have here is theta over two, and we're interested in theta. So we'd have to multiply these by two. Well, actually, I'm mistaken here. We don't have to um, add 360 because if we multiply these by two, we're we're definitely we're going to make the angle even larger. So we can forget about these. In this case, so theta then is 90 divided by or multiplied by two, which is 180 degrees. But if we multiply 270 by two, you know we're going to get an angle that's outside of the domain we're interested in which is um, theta between 0 and 360 degrees. So we can forget about this one. 2 times 270 is actually 540. So we don't want that. So there is only one solution here. Theta equals 180 degrees. But we already have that solution from the other factor. This factor here. So we've no new information. So at the end of the day, we've only three solutions. Now you might say that there's a lot of extra work doing it this way, but in many cases you've no choice but to solve it this way. The reason why we could do it the other way is because we had an identity for cos 2 theta. We could write cos 2 theta in terms of cos theta. We saw that it's equal to 2 cos squared theta minus 1, and then we ended up in, with a quadratic in cos theta. So we could write cos 2 theta in terms of this function here. And we just had a single angle as well, so everything worked out. But of course, that won't always be the case. What if I replace 2 theta here with 3 theta? Then we're in trouble. Then we have no choice maybe but to um, use a formula for a sum of cos functions. Write it as a product. And if we have 0 on the right-hand side, then we can put each factor equal to 0. So actually, we, we need to have 0 on the right-hand side as well. Um, when zero is on the right hand side, then we can uh, set each factor equal to zero. Uh, uh, you know, so that that's important as well when we're using one of the identities for a sum of cos functions. Or indeed, we could have a sum of sine functions, or maybe a sine and a cos function. But with zero on the other side, it becomes doable. <laughs>